I cannot believe this. They are actually a remaking Chronos Command Dragon. Like, on the same day where I had the opportunity to reveal the Gear Chronicle reprint for the revival selection, they dropped this bombshell. Like, it's almost a second birthday at this point. Holy crap! Like, I think a lot of you guys out there are thinking that I probably would be more excited for the potential of a retrain of Gear Groovy. But secretly, I'm actually way more excited about the prospect of the new Chronos Command Dragon, especially with the description they gave to us. As my whole Vanger journey with Gear Chronicle started with the OG. It started with Chronos Command Dragon, and I cannot wait to see what it's going to be. But before I get ahead of myself and get a bit too excited here, we're still at the intro of this video, and there's way more news that we need to go over. So let's jump straight into this video. Hey car fighters, welcome back to another car for the update and oh boy is there a lot of new news to go over and also Chronos Command Dragon, Chronos Command Dragon, Chronos Command Dragon. You get the idea, there's more news for the upcoming V collection set but we also have the last couple of clan reveals for the reprints for the revival selection set but before we get into that news we also got the confirmation date for the upcoming Lyrical Ministerial Trial Deck as well as the set. So we now know that the upcoming Trial Deck will be released for the English side on the 24th of September. And for the set we get that one on October the 1st. So the Trial Deck and the set are one week apart which is similar to what we've got with the 5 starter decks and the first main booster set of Genesis of the 5th grade. Now, the only thing we need to worry about are the other releases for these two months because if you aren't aware we get five sets in two months. We got, if I remember correctly, we got the Revival Selection set, we got the Trial Deck, then the Lyrical Monasterial set, and then Clan Collection 1 and 2 in that same month. So hopefully there is enough time and space between these set to give some players the breathing room in their wallet, namely myself, to not succumb under the weight of all these new cards. Now with that news out of the way, Let's take a look at the new confirmed reprints for the upcoming Revival Selection set. So we already had a couple of clans revealed, but now we get into the last 8 clans. So first off we take a look at the Genesis one, and for Genesis, oh boy, these are really spicy. Because if you were hoping to play the Fenrir loop or any type of loop stretch in Genesis, here you go. You got all the key pieces that you need because... The rest you can fill in for whatever type of strategy you want to go, if you want to go for the Fenrir loop. So, yeah, I don't have to explain how good these reprints are. Now, if we move over to Narukami, we see these reprints, and as a sub-main for Narukami, I'm not gonna lie, these reprints are a bit underwhelming, because the only reprint that actually matters here is the reprint of the G-Guard Bulwark Dragon, as this is an actual useful G-Guard that's a staple in your G-Zone, because it allows you to snipe your opponent's units, together with the flip G-Guard they also affects to, thus giving you more opportunities and more interaction during your opponent's turn. The only other card that potentially could be used to some extent is V-Max, as it's an emergency oh shit button that you can press if you're about to lose the game and you have no other way out. The rest of the reprints are kind of whatever, like Choho might be a good card, but remember Choho is already going to be reprinted in a V-Clan selection or clan collection set, and if you're gonna play V, there's no reason for you to buy this set that you're already gonna get in the V-Clan collection. So yeah, besides that, it, it, the reprints are kind of unwhelming, but what's to be expected because most of Narukami's playstyles and most of their cards are going into the more standard plus variant, as most of the standard cards from the V-Series already were power creeping or outperforming the G-Era cards on Narukami, because I'm not gonna lie, most of Narukami's G-Era cards were kind of underwhelming until the last segment of Narukami, but that's very Thunderstrike heavy and doesn't really interact well with the V-Era counterparts. Now if we move over to Pilmoon, Pilmoon got everything that we wanted, because these are the reprints that we got for Pilmoon. Like, I was advocating for a Flying Periton, a Purple to Pieces, and the stand trigger is also nice as a nation because these cards were are, are pivotal to the strategy for Pilmoon if you want to play the main Magia playstyle with Harry and they were too expensive. Now they're gonna be more accessible and this is awesome. Like I know for a fact that this guy is gonna play with some Pilmoon premium decks and I cannot wait. Now the next clan that we've got the reprints of is Mega Kali and for Mega Kali we got the Upper Endless Stride or Up to Endless Stride which is 
in a, which is a very powerful strat. I don't know if it's useful till this day, but I know it was really expensive and almost nowhere to get this thing uh, anywhere on the market. So having it now here is great because now it's accessible for players again. The overwhelm stride is a very nice addition because it's a very powerful stride. The G guards are also really good. Then for the rest of the reprints, we see Gridora, but it's just there to be the great free. And then we got the crit and the stand. Now I don't think the stand is all that great, but the crit is actually very, very interesting because it's a crit that puts itself back into the deck. Now, are you gonna play this crit? I'm not too sure. It's still a 5K crit, so it's not that strong, but it is a crit that shuffles itself back into the deck. So maybe you want to experiment with that. And now you have more access to this crit if it was a bit hard to get. I don't know for sure if that was the case, but besides that, the G-Zone reprints are pretty damn good. Now, next up we see the Oracle Think Tank reprints. And once again, I'm not too well first with the Oracle side of premium. So I'm not so sure how good these reprints are. Itsukishima as a reprint is nice. Then the Amaterasu G-Guard is also a very powerful G-Guard. So having it once again is also really good. But besides of their other reprints, I'm not so sure if they're really that great. Now, in terms of the Angel Feather reprints, they are actually really, really spicy because not only do we have the No CL reprints and they do see some fair play, we also see a nice package for the Rescue playstyle for premium Angel Feathers. And getting all these cards being reprinted is also pretty good, especially with the latest Rescue-like support from the V-Series because now we can actually try to experiment with these cards on a cheaper basis so we can get an understanding of how good these cards actually are by, by putting them together in a deck. Deck, and then look further in the broader scope of Angel Feathers because Angel Feathers as a clan with the whole rescue check mechanic has a lot of combo potential and there are so many things you can explore that there's no way for me to even grasp the surface of how good this deck can potentially be. So at the very least seeing that the Eden Stride as well as the G Guard, we've got the Enatron and to some extent the Stendrier our nice addition to have more cheaper and easier access to these cards is nice for the clan as a whole. But the clan that I know for a fact where these reprints are pretty insane are the one for Nubatama. Like, just look at the G-Zone! Like, look at these cards! All three strides are pretty damn insane! And then we also have to dominate G-Guard? Holy crap, your entire G-Zone is here! Like... You only miss a couple of pieces that you can just fill in whatever you want. Probably maybe the Tsumaru Khan stride that can negate your entire opponent's hand. But that's about it that I can think of. Now, of course, we have the great free Shiri Nui. We can toss that aside. But then we see the Ember clone being reprinted. And this is actually a very useful card if you want to go for the hand destruction route or the OTK strategy where you just rip your opponent's hand to shred and then start multi-attacking. So... That's also a pretty nice reprint. Now the stand trigger is just a stand trigger. I don't really think it's that useful, but how can you complain with this G-Zone that's right here in front of your eyes? Like, holy shit. And then the final clan that we have is Aqua Force. Now for Aqua Force, we see the Galvilia stride, which is amazing. We see Alexandros, which is an amazing stride. The Ice Barrier, I think it's an all right G-Guard. I don't know if it's that instrumental, unlike Galvilia, for example. And then the rest of the reprints, Again, I'm not too well first with Aquaforce. Like, I know that the crit was very important and was expensive to at some point, but I don't know if it was that important with the introduction of the two special crit from both premium collection sets. So this card might be a bit out of date. And I know for a fact that a lot of Aquaforce players are disappointed in the fact that we got Tidal Assault instead of Pursuit Assault. And honestly, if they put in Pursuit Assault on the spot of Tidal Assault, I think these reprints would have been fine. But at the very least, we got Alexandros and Galvilia being reissued once again for Aqua Force, which is nice for at least new players that want to try to take the clan for a spin. And with that, we now saw all the reprints for the upcoming Revival Selection set. Now you might be wondering, now hold on a moment, those are 20 clans that we saw so far. Where are the other four? Well, if you do the math, those four are Gear Chronicle, Dimension Police, Grand Blue, and Link Joker. And if those four clans did ring a bell, yes, your favorite content creators were able to reveal set four clans on their channel for a world premiere first. And those are, of course, different fight for Dimension Police, Solemn Vanguard for Grand Blue, and World Class Card Fighters, better known as WCC, for Link Joker. And then the fourth one, of course, Gear Chronicle was revealed by your boy, Mr. Time Leap. Now, I'm not gonna show these reprints in this video. If you wanna know those reprints, check out our videos on our respective channel. We'll put a link in the description down below. But definitely check out my video if you haven't seen it. Like, links on top here. It's an awesome watch, if I do say so myself. But definitely, if you haven't watched it, what are you doing here? 
check out that video. Now with the revival selection done, let's take a look at the new confirmed cards and description for the upcoming V collection sets cards. And we start off with the reveals for Kagero and surprise, surprise, we got Seal Dragons. And what the description is for Seal Dragons is it's what we would expect from Seal Dragons because Seal Dragons do Seal Dragon things. As for both the Grade 1 and the Grade 2, Seal Dragon Cursey and Cordoro, or how do you supposed to pronounce that, both of their description read, both of them have unusual skills that force the opponent to call Grade 2s. And in Block Kate's description reads, retire the opponent's Grade 2 rearguards at once. Let's retire the grade 2 called by Corsi and Kurt Duroy. Even if there's no grade 2 rearguards, dot 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 question mark exclamation mark, can work greatly with Dauntless Drive Dragon as well, which has shown to be great support unit for many Kagero decks. So this is pretty interesting because yes, we expect them to forcefully call grade 2s, but with the description reading, it can retire grade 2 rearguards, even if there's no grade 2 rearguards. What the hell did it mean with that? Like... Can it just rip out cards from your opponent's hand or something? I'm very curious how this works. Is it some type of super retire that's somewhat of a bind maybe that can retire things from the drop zone? I'm very curious how that play plans out. And of course the interaction with Dauntless Red Dragon, we could assume this because Dauntless Red Dragon is a very generic card, but maybe there's some type of specific synergy that makes Dauntless Red Dragon together with Blockade even better than any other grade three boss unit for Kagero. So I'm very curious on what that means for Kagero. Now on the same day, they also revealed the link joker cards and oh boy it's not what we expected or at least some people didn't expect but i am now scared for chaos because they revealed these cards and yes they have star vader in a name so chaos breaker dragon is going to get some spicy support and don't forget the great one can search out all these cards so first off we have the great one which is Palladium, and its description reads has a skill that can lock an opponent's card when a lock card is unlocked so we've seen this in the other great one from the previous clan selection set so this is nice to keep your opponent's board locked and it can synergize with chaos breaker dragon's own skill that can give you even more value over the course of the game then for the great two colony maker your description reads says call a star vader rearguard from deck uh, excuse me, an archetype surger for Chaos Breaker Dragon? Please not! Like, that can be quite ridiculous, especially with all the other cards, so... Uh, this could be scary. And then li lastly, we have, of course, Infinity Zero Dragon, and its description reads as... Lock an opponent's rearguard when ridden, and when you call it. Goes without saying, has great synergy with Chaos Breaker Dragon. Gee, you don't say! But... When ridden? So we're going to get a break right esque ability. Now I'm curious if this skill is restricted to the Chaos Breaker archetype or, or the Star Fader archetype, because that will make sense. But if it isn't, then you give the entire Link Joker archetype or the entire Link Joker clan access to lock, which can be a bit ridiculous, especially since Messiah to some extent can combo off of that. So yeah now to my surprise we also got some more reveals today and usually we don't get any more card news in the weekend but in this case we do and today we got the reveal for the genesis card and we already knew that fortuna is going to be the main card but now we also see the support cards around her and those are these cards now their description reads as follows which of origins valencia and which of ravens chamomao these two cards work well with genesis and make heavy use of soul blast abilities that literally can mean anything but then valencia has a skill that builds soul when she's soul blasted so we have seen this in the original witches which are incidentally also going to be reprinted in the premium revival selection set and then for chamo mao we have is an attacker that calls herself when she's soul blasted during your turn i believe the original version of her did this as well but it could also be an other genesis card that i'm not mi uh, mixing up with but overall this is more multi-tech strategy options and this could even synergize with fenrir which is actually pretty interesting and then lastly for fortuna we have the description by paying her soul less cost you'll be able to see your fate of course you can guarantee triggers during your drive check but also damage check Further effects will activate when a trigger is revealed for a damage check. This 
is really interesting because we usually don't get deck manipulation during our opponent's turn to set up triggers for a damage check or maybe at least at the end of turn. There were ways in Oracle Think Tank and to some extent to other clans as well to do this but that was basically to combo and to stack certain skills in a specific order to be able to stack your deck after your Vanguard already attacked but you usually didn't want to do that. But now we actually get a card that focuses on this or at least want to put more emphasis on that part is really interesting so i cannot wait to see how these skills will work out and what type of game plan that will bring to genesis now the other clan that got revealed today is tachikaze and this actually is a surprising thing because they're going to get ancient dragons it looks to be like that these cards are actually going to be ancient dragons and the reason why i specify this is because tachikaze also got the true ancient dragon archetype when gaia was introduced last year which is also a budget deck. But if you don't remember, those cards don't specifically ask for a true ancient dragon. They just want ancient dragon. So that budget archetype can work with these new cards and potentially these new cards could work with that budget archetype. So that's really interesting, especially since that budget archetype had two searchers. Yeah, this could get ugly fast and especially if we read these description. Because for the great one, we have ancient dragon Iguana Gorg. I'm probably going to butcher these names really hard, but its description reads as It has a skill to return to the board when retired. Just like its past incarnations, it will let you get more and more out of your retire cost. This is pretty good because, as the description already explains, you're going to get more and more value as it allows you to recall to the board. Now, if it allows you to recall in stand position... Multi-attacks! But we have to wait to see if it's going to be in attack or in defense position. Or maybe it's going to be at the end of turn. That could also be a restriction. So we have to wait to see what the actual restriction and interaction is going to be. If it allows for multi tax or just for more value. Then for the other card we have Dino Crowd. And its description reads as a super powerful attacker that can power up by retiring one of your own rearguards. Very generic skill description as this is what Tachikaze is known for. And then for the Great Free, this is really interesting. Acquire Axel Gifts. By retiring your own rear guards, call units to those exo circles and relentlessly attack your opponent. The ancient dragons will have skills to give themselves armed gauge when you drive check reveals a trigger. Okay, this can literally mean anything but being able to turn your units into exo markers. Pretty interesting because that reminds me of the witches archetype for Oracle Think Tank that could do the exact same thing but then turn its witches into protect markers. So I'm very curious how this is going to play out and how this is going to pan with the already present true ancient dragon support. So yeah, let's see what this is going to be for uh, Tachikaze. But then we get to the reveals that we got yesterday. And yes, there's a reason why I saved this for last, but you'll see that in a moment. So first off, we got the reveals for Spike Brothers. And for Spike Brothers, we've got more Dudley support. And we start off with Dudley Daisy. I believe this was originally a great one. And her description reads says, calls more units when placed due to the card ability. This can literally be interact with Spike Brothers on all accounts, but more importantly, it can interact with the Dudley Great Free that we've got in the last V Clan selection set because it allows you to multi tech during the battle phase and call more units to the field. Then, if you call this card, this can then call another unit, thus chaining up even more and be able to fill out an entire board. So, that's an interesting approach that you could take. And then we got Dudley Mason, which is a great two. I remember that correctly. I really hate that card. And its description reads In addition to an on hit skill, Great. It will also have a skill when it leaves. So it probably will have its somewhere similar to its old and hit skill, which allow you to multi tag. That's the reason why I really hated this card. But now it also interacts when it leaves. And this is an important thing because you now might think to yourself, when does this card really leaves the field? This all had to do with Dudley Emperor because Dudley Emperor's description read says, "Give your rear guard a power up when they attack, but they will be removed afterwards." Let's attack with Reckless Abandon. So this is basically somewhat of a charge-like skill where you give your units extra power, but then they will be put on the bottom of your deck at the end of the turn. But like we see with Mason, you don't really mind because it gives you more value. And interesting enough, or you would expect this at this point, it synergizes really nicely with Rising Nova, because with Rising Nova, you can now copy both Dudley Great Freeze and you can then 
do everything, they will move themselves in the field, and then with the previous Great Free Dudley, Dudley Lucifer, you can then call more units, and with the new Great One, you can probably repopulate an entire new front row without needing to call on top of your own units, and you can multi tag without any worry. Yeah. Spike Brothers can is probably gonna be pretty insane after this. So we have to wait and see how, how much power we're gonna give our units and how good it's going to be. At the very least, if we're gonna go this route, probably not gonna see Bull Spike, which means no moving marker shenanigans. But then again, we got other grade one and grade two supports that can do that. So we're probably not done with that just yet. But then we get to the final reveals and we see gear chronicle and oh boy are these reveals spicy because we got these cards and yes those are gg Calibum and chronos command dragon so let's take a look at what their description reads for gg it reads you can call it when it's discarded from hand Furthermore, it has a useful skill to draw on rear guards. So this could potentially be another Chrono Tooth or another Ripple if it can be called in the stand position. And on top of that, just drawing cards? Yeah, Gear Chronicles Great 1 lineup is going to look very powerful at this point. So, <laughs> it's going to be fun. But then we got Kalibum. And Kalibum, oh man, this is very nostalgic for me. It, its description reads as a skill that can return any player's rear guard to the deck Additional abilities are activated depending on the return card's grade. So, more field control for Gear Chronicle, more rewind abilities. But interesting enough, it specifies any player. So you can even put your own units to the bottom of your field if you want to get that specific ability off. So, there are more shenanigans to be a foot year. And I cannot wait to what Calibum is going to bring. I know a lot of my old opponents are going to get PTSD with the return of Calibum. But honestly... I am all for this. And, but then at the end, we got Kronos Command Dragon. And for Kronos Command Dragon, its description reads, it can return all your opponent's rear guards to the deck. Okay. That alone is strong, but it has an additional skill. Exclamation mark. The Chrono Jet Dragon deck advances to a new stage. So full field control for Gear Conco now. But what is that additional skill? Probably has something to do with maybe the amount of grades you put back or the amount of units you put back. Honestly, I am very curious of what it's going to be. And this is going to be very fun. I honestly cannot wait what Chronos Command Dragon is going to bring to the table. As well as what Gigi and Calibum is going to do. They're clan favorites of mine. I've been playing with these cards ever since I started Gear Chronicle. So having them finally return in the V-Series in a new power-up version... I honestly cannot wait. And as I explained in the intro, probably a lot of you guys were maybe think I was more on the gear groovy side of things because I'm Mr. Time Leap and also been more with ZTB. But I started Gear Chronicle before Time Leap really took off on my part. I started when Time Leap was a thing, but I, my first deck was a rewind deck focused around Calibum, around Danish, around Steam Geyser Dragon, and Upheaval Pegasus and Kronos Command Dragon. And Kronos Command Dragon, now finally being here, I cannot wait to get these rerun shenanigans going again, but then in the V-Series. And to put this point home even further, even during ZTB's era, I made sure that I would always get an excuse to put a Kronos Command Dragon in my deck. Here's a link to a deck profile video that I did on the Crushing the Meta YouTube channel before I even had this channel. And in that ZTB deck profile, and we're talking about ZTB like GBT11, GBT12, I still put Chronos Command Dragon Revolution in my G zone because I had an excuse to do it. And to be fair, it was a real good reason because it was specifically to counter the Luard meta because the Luard at the time was the old Luard without Luard Abyss or whatever the other Luard version. So the entire deck revolved around retiring their units when they tried to call down more units. But if their field was empty, they couldn't really do anything because they couldn't benefit of their stride ability because the stride effect forced them to retire one of their own rear guards. So if you could clear their board, you could stop a Luard dead in its track. And Chronos Command Revolution was the perfect counter to that strategy because if Luard, it's Shadow Pedal, retires your board, well, 
You can just try it into Revolution without having the original Chronos Command Dragon face up in your G-Zone because both players' fields are gonna get wiped, but I don't have a field. And then afterwards, I can use Chrono Dragon G's stride ability to call unit and time up unit to then already set up a new board to do all my combo plays. While my Luard opponent has no board, they cannot get more value out of their Luard stride and they're basically stuck there and they need to commit even more cards from hand to even do something the next try turn. So, I always make sure to have some excuse to get this card in my deck and now finally getting this thing in the V-Series is pretty damn hype. So I cannot wait to see what this card does and how it's gonna import and how it's gonna upgrade my Chrono Jet Dragon in V. And small spoiler alert, I've been experimenting to try make a Chronos Command specific build for Gear Chronicle during the end of the G era and even to some extent during the beginning of the premium era or the premium format. But I couldn't make the deck work because we were missing one specific card and it was a main deck Vanguard unit that had the Kronos Command Dragon in his name. This card, if it's somewhat useful even in a premium format, just for its name alone, can potentially make that premium deck turn from a dream in an actual physical thing. So I am a multiple level hype for this card and if that deck is somewhat decent enough you bet your ass I'm gonna do a special deck profile for that particular deck yes tiny piece of thing yes ZTV is not really a thing but you damn sure I'm gonna make Kronos Command Dragon a thing in premium and besides that the only other thing that I now could hope for in, in the V series as a retrain is of course Gear Groovy but Gear Groovy aside there is one more card that's on my list that needs to be retrained that will get me really, really excited. Bushiroad, if you're watching, make this a thing. Make this card happen. I need it. I, I need this in my life again. But all the fun stuff aside, these are all the reveals that we got in the past few days. Yes, these were jam-packed with a lot of stuff. Like, we now saw all the Revival Collection or Revival Selection reveals. So we're done with that. We can now look at the set as a whole. I'm probably going to do a special video on that, but more on that in a week or so time. But then we also saw more news for the upcoming V-Clan Collection set. And you probably can assume that for the next coming 8 days, we're going to get two clans revealed every single day because that means that at the end of next week on Sunday we got all 24 clans revealed for the V clan collection and then probably after that week so after, so in about two ish weeks time they're probably going to start with the actual card reveals so hype times are afoot and that means a lot of more extra content on your way but of course there's even more news that we got this week as we got all the card of the days reveals so if you're interested in the latest support for the five great nations then tune in tomorrow when we go over all these new cards for dark state brand gate the dragon empire stoikea as well as skater sanctuary but further than that that's all for this card fight update as always this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash insider you guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I see you guys in the next one! Kratos Command! <laughs>